Welcome to our tutorial about importing from an audio CD. Importing from a music or audio CD is a little different than importing from other digital media that's already on your hard drive. First, let's create an empty audio track where I'm going to put the CD track that I'll bring in. It's most likely that your music CD has stereo files on it, so use a stereo configuration and click OK. Now let's position my cursor at the location where I want to insert the track. Let's go to File or Cubase, scroll down to Import, and select Audio CD. The Import from Audio CD dialog window opens. If your CD was recognized by Cubase, the tracks will be listed in this section of the window. If Cubase is looking at the wrong drive, select the correct drive from the Drive drop-down menu. Now select the transfer speed you want to use to import the files. A slower speed limits the potential for transfer errors. Over here we've got a control button we can use to eject the CD, and this option here, Secure Mode, is for when Cubase is having a hard time reading from your CD. You try the import again, checking the secure mode option. Import takes longer this way, but it helps you get better results if, for example, your disk is scratched and Cubase is having a hard time reading it. Now we select the track that we want to import. If you want to have a listen or audition, before you do the import, you can press this play button here. And press stop to end the audition. You can also audition between the time markers that you set by dragging along this ruler. Click on this button to play from the left marker, and click on the next button to play to the right marker. If you only want to grab part of the track, you can adjust the copy start and end arrows. Let's stretch them back out to copy the full piece. Here's a volume control, by the way, for the audition. Notice that as I drag the markers along the ruler, the copy end position updates in the track list. And let me drag the marker to the end of the ruler. The end position updates in the track list again. We can also enter the values manually by double clicking on the copy start and end fields. Just type in the number and press enter when you're finished. And the ruler updates to display the section of the track that we're importing. We can import more than one track at a time by holding down the control key on your PC while you check these boxes here, or the command key on your Macintosh. You can use this to select non sequential tracks. If you want to select a number of tracks that are sequential or all in a row, select the first track, hold down the Shift key, and select your last track. All the tracks in between your clicks are selected. Let's use the first track, Ite Vasa. Once you've imported a track into Cubase, its name will appear here. The default name is CD Track. We can modify this by left clicking in it and typing a new name. and press enter when you're done. Destination folder. By default, Cubase wants to import into the audio folder for your current active project. If for some reason you need to change that, you can click on destination folder and then browse for a different location. You can even create a new folder. Let's cancel out of this dialog window. When your settings are exactly as you want them, you press copy. You have to press copy or nothing will happen. You can't just click OK at this point. And Cubase processes our request. We get a status message waiting and then a percentage completed meter that displays Cubase's progress. We're just waiting for Cubase to get rolling here. If you need to interrupt the copy, you can click the stop button. And now Cubase has started the copy. We see a status completed percentage, and the status meter displays that percentage that's complete.
and I'm going to pause my video while this continues. I'll start my recording again once the extraction is nearly complete. Okay, the extraction is complete and the file appears under copied files at the bottom of the window. So as you can see, this is a little bit clearer than the grab process in previous versions of Cubase. Once we click OK, our CD track appears in its own lane in the project window, inserted where we position the cursor, and named as we'd specified. This concludes our lesson on importing from an audio CD.